Okay, so here are today's three big stories in about three minutes. So the first one is this. It's a story of dueling air defense artilleries. I think the counteroffensive is no longer going to be focused so much on the ground as it is going to be in missiles being fired and air defense shooting it down and what can penetrate and get through and that sort of thing. So here is Alinsky, uh, new delivered NASAMS systems enter service in Ukraine, and that's a great thing. Uh, and they talk about that in this article, but just a few days ago, we saw this. Russia, this is BulgariaMilitary.com, Russia buys a thousand long-range anti-aircraft missiles for the S-400. And so I think you'll see dueling anti-aircraft as well as targeting of anti-aircraft systems. And that's going to be a big, big thing going forward. Second big story is Zelensky was talking about how it's not the right time for elections. And this is just fodder for those that are opposed to Zelensky to say, see, he's undemocratic. He's a dictator. He's trying to hold on to power and that kind of thing. Nonsense. What's actually happening here is um, just that the Constitution and martial law are not, you'd have to change the law in order to get to a place where you can actually hold elections right now. Uh, the sense, this is from Atlantic Council, this sense of surprise is not, all, not solely because holding elections during an all-out war would contradict European history, standards, legal traditions, and importantly, Ukraine's own laws and public opinion, but because some have suggested Ukraine's need to hold elections no matter what to establish its democratic credentials. I don't think it does. I would like to see it, but that's because I'm an American and this is our traditions and how we function, but I'm not going to put that onto Ukraine. I think that's kind of silly for me to do to them. Okay, third and final story. Okay, Republicans hold Ukraine aid hostage over Donald Trump's border wall. Okay, so the Republicans in the House who control the House are negotiating with the Senate who control, or the Democrats who control the Senate. And they're trying to broker a bill that will tie Ukraine aid to the border. Now, Republicans have for a long time been very hawkish about, hey, we need to control the border wall. It's not about not letting people in. That's a misnomer. The idea is actually that you want to know who's coming in and then let in however many you want to let in. So controlling the border wall is valuable to them. And you'll hear this framed as Republicans are holding this hostage, as you see in this HuffPost article. I would submit to you that from the Republicans' perspective, you could also look at it as how now I'm talking not my kind of Republican who wants to support Ukraine, but other Republicans. How much do you really want to support Ukraine? If you do want to support Ukraine, then negotiate with us to give us the thing that we want so we can give you the thing you want. And then you compromise and work together. And I think that's how it'll actually get done. But you have to look at it from both sides. Can't just say my way or the highway. That's not how politics works. OK, that's it. Thank you for your time and the likes and shares and subscribes. And thank you for being the kind of person that cares about Ukraine.